Hi guys, I just moved to a new home and I treated this room acoustically to make it my home studio. And I wanted to show you how this sounds. Are acoustic panels better than foam or not? Let's see, more next. <laughs> As you can see, it's a small room and that's why I put the listening position uh, facing the window, which has the shorter wall. This is on purpose. Each room is different, but usually you want to try to avoid listening from the middle of the room because that's where you have a lot of face cancellation. In my previous room, I put some acoustic foam on the ceiling and then I had two acoustic blankets that I would move accordingly on C-stands. That worked okay for recording. So that's why I always uh, made music on headphones and I never bothered about studio monitors. In my new room, I have the same two acoustic blankets I had before, but now one is on the window and the other one is on the door so that I muffle a little bit the sounds that may come from the outside. So they finished this thing on July when they said and the other thing I did to treat this acoustically and to have better sound. So they finished this thing on July when they say and the other thing I did to treat this acoustically and to have better sound. JK has a planner that allows you to see how the panels will look on your room. I decided to go with three panels on each side and one panel on the cloud. My idea was to make this room nice to record audio, but also make it better in terms of listening. To mount the panels on the walls, I didn't have to drill. I only had to use this. So this little thing, you just push it to the wall and then it has this hook that you can hang stuff. It's just like hanging a painting where you just uh, hang it on the wire. So it was pretty easy. It just stays like this on the wall. It's very strong when you put it like this, it can hang, you can hang like up to eight kilograms, but if you pull it, it you, can, you can just pull it out. So just so easy that I really recommend if you don't want to make any drills, check out if you have something similar to this. I'll try to find something on on Amazon or something because I grabbed this from just my local hardware stuff that I have here. How did I mount the one on the ceiling? Well, that, that was a little more complex. This was good for the walls, but to hang something on the ceiling, I had to use this. So this is stronger, obviously. And I had to use this wall fixing. This one is really good. I use this for different things around the house. I really recommend this brand, Fisher. Uh, I use this specifically. This one's called Duo Power. The panels have four hooks, so you can hang them vertically and upside down or horizontally. That way I could just bring the panel to the ceiling and put the wire inside the hooks. This is on the ceiling and then the wire just goes inside here like, like a regular painting would be on the wall. This is just hanging from the ceiling. Then this the, the panel will rest here. So bringing the panel up to the ceiling was a little bit complicated. I didn't know how to do it, but then I have C stands that I use for the lightning or for, for the microphone or when I have to record. Uh, from a certain angle, the camera, like when I did on the push videos. So I took two of these C stands and I put them side by side and I put the panel on top. So that way I could just bring up one C stand and level up the other C stand. So I just started moving the C stands up and up. And then at some point I had the panel really close to the ceiling while the panel is resting here. I could just put the wire inside without having to grab the panel. So anything that makes your life easier that can have the panel really close there and you can just put it in place. That's that's wonderful. So it took me a while anyway, but it works. What these things do actually is just uh, remove reflections. It's just taking out that reflection uh, so that it doesn't bounce off from the wall. Even if you take out the reflection, that doesn't mean that that wall is not going to transmit to the other side. If you have an open window, that would cause 100% sound absorption because no sound is going to be reflected from that window. All the sound is going to go through the window and that's going to cause 0% reflection. So that means that that window is effectively 100% absorbing sound. But people outside the window is going to hear whatever you're saying. So it's still going to be able to transmit.
So fiberglass is better to isolation than foam uh, just because of the mass, but it's still not going to be that much. Well-made isolation requires a lot of mass and things inside the walls. And yeah, it's not, it's not that easy as just putting foam. Maybe taking out the reflections of the room will make that room sound cleaner. It, it will seem like less sound will come out from that room, but especially in the low end, that's super complicated because the low end tends to permeate everywhere. All the panels do is to remove reverb and remove uh, reflections. So if you want to remove some of that boominess that monitors can have with the low end, you can use foam under the speakers. You reduce the vibration of the monitor going through the floor and everywhere. I ended up buying the ICO Acoustic. They're more expensive than the foam. I think the ICO Acoustic do a better job at removing that boominess and I can hear less of that sound. And also if you have neighbors below you, they're going to be happier. Sometimes with these monitors, it doesn't seem that loud to you, but they can transmit a lot of that kick and the bass uh, underneath you and then through the floor and then the the neighbors can hear it i made this graph where you can see the advanced acoustics foam that i had before i used the values that i saw on amazon and i also went to the website i saw that they have different values so i put them both but the values on Amazon were like uh, just a few frequencies while on the website they had like a better, more spread out information coming from the companies that make them will be the best case scenario. One or above is just effectively one. So there's no more absorption than the one. It's, this is just the way it's measured. Anytime you see something above one, it's just one and that's it. If you take a look at the foam, I put also the values that they have on their website and you can see that at the voice range, like the voice can be like around 200, 400, uh, 600. So you can see that it doesn't really absorb that. So at this point at 400 Hertz, you see that it's 066. So that means that 33% of the sound is still reflected. So that's how you read these numbers. So for instance, at 500 Hertz, you have 0.82. So that means that 18% is still uh, reflected. Same here. So you still have like 8%, it's still less, but yeah, you, you have uh, at some point here, uh, up until 1600, it's still reflecting some of that some of those frequencies and basically when you go down to 200 hertz uh 100 hertz that's just meaningless when you use um, foam because it doesn't do much and it's similar to wood floor or plywood and things like that do so doesn't make much difference. So now with the GIK panel it's already doing something on 125 is absorbing 40% of uh, that frequency. And as soon as you go to 200 Hertz, you see that it starts with 72% of sound absorption. So it's not up until you go to 315. It's absorbing 93% uh, of the 315 Hertz while the foam was at 50%. So that's that's a lot of difference. So between 315 and 400 is already absorbing 100% of the frequencies uh, above that. Where if you look at the foam, yeah, you have to wait until 1600. So that's why usually you can hear a lot of like a, a big difference on the high end. Like when you speak, obviously there's a lot of uh, frequencies it's not just the node you're and the node you're speaking so you hear some benefits when using foam the difference with the acoustic panels is uh, really huge that's why i wanted to have like a representation of how these make a difference uh, these are obviously values that i haven't checked that gik give you that the advanced acoustic foam makers give you so then i also went to the wikipedia and they have other materials uh, absorptions and they have this acoustic tile that you see in some offices on the ceiling if everyone is speaking that would be real annoying like the build-up of reflections they tend to use these acoustic tiles that 
they're really good actually they they take like 80 percent to 90 percent of the reflections out down here you have uh heavy curtains i have no idea this is just wikipedia giving you like a default values i don't know what these heavy curtains look like i have heavy curtains in my room i know these do something but yeah i know they're not perfect but i couldn't find the exact values for this brand yeah and then you have carpet over concrete and you see that it's taking out like 60 percent but it's nice to know how these values work so the next time you buy something even if you end up buying foam you have a uh, some idea of how is this going to affect your room. Rooms have different decays and different responses to frequencies. Small rooms like this tend to have uneven responses on the low frequencies. This is called room coloration. It basically means that the room has its own EQ based on the material and the monitor's position, the listening position. Everything is affecting how the sound waves reflect through the room and that affects the volume of each frequency. So that's why the bass or the kick will sound in a different volume than it should be when you are on a room that has a EQ that is flat. You can test this by playing a sine wave on your DAW or with a keyboard and then you go to a lower note, you start playing ascending notes and then you'll see that some notes will sound higher in volume than others and that's because the coloration of your room. That is assuming that your monitors are perfectly flat, then that means that the room is affecting the volume of this. For a better representation of what's going on, you can always grab one of these. This is a calibrated microphone. These microphones allow you to measure the room and see what frequencies are being affected. I bought the Sonarworks microphone to use it with uh, Room EQ Wizard, a free acoustics analysis software. My idea was to measure the room and be aware of the coloration of this room. And then maybe try to move uh, the monitors or move my position to see what's the best position I could place my monitors or I could place myself to have the flattest response. I also use their software. I have a trial that allowed me to measure my room and then it creates a calibration profile that allows you to EQ the output of your monitors. So that means that it's trying to counteract those frequencies that are bumped or lowered on your room so that you end up with a flat response. I wasn't going to buy the software, I was just trying the trial, uh, but actually I've seen that it's very easy to use, very easy to set up, very easy to measure. It actually sounds really good. When I was listening for music that I already know that I that I listened to many, many times, I could hear that applying the setting was making it sound much better than before. So I'm really sold on that. It's a little bit expensive, but I feel like it's, this is one of those things that I would use now on every room and every place I go. If, if I ever move from this, I'll always test this. And I really like the flat response that it gives you. This is not solving your room problems. It's uh, minimizing them. I'll investigate a little bit more with the EQ Room Wizard so I can get a better picture of what's going on in this room about decays and other stuff. Sonarworks is about EQing, about uh, volume. It cannot fix problems that you may have in your room like reverb and reflections. And finally, I just wanted to say that you don't need any of these to make music. You really need a room like uh, properly balanced to, to master if you really want to master or uh, then you have to use uh, really good headphones that can can help you on that. If you don't have any of these, you can always check your songs in different places. So you can check it on a car or in different systems so to see that they sound better on everything. But when you really use flat response uh, room and a flat uh, monitors, it usually translates better. So that's the word that, that people use. Translate means that you hear it properly here. You, you, if you listen to music with this setup, you can hear how everything sounds correctly and then it translates better to other systems. And again, this, this is just an add-on, a nice to have. Don't let any of these get you out of the goal that you may have uh, being uh, making a podcast or making a YouTube channel or uh, making music, whatever you want to make. Uh, you don't really need any of these. There's other ways to fix things. There's creative ways to address some of these problems. For instance, if you have a lot of reverb in your room, uh, you can always try to put your microphone really close to your mouth. That's why you see a lot of YouTubers uh, that's, that speak uh, with their microphone right 
in front of their mouth because that's the best way to remove all the background noise. It removes also the uh, reflections from the room. So there's no really right or wrong when it comes to creativity and you can make music with a pair of headphones. There's no really need of any of this really, uh, but it's a really nice to have if you can go with it. Uh, it's really nice to hear everything clearly uh, when you're mixing or when you're listening to music it sounds really good i hope you enjoyed uh leave a like if you like it uh, comment down below let me know if you have experience with foam and acoustic panels and if you notice the difference as well i noticed uh, now a huge difference between foam and panels but before i couldn't tell much the difference i i guess i'm getting better at, at understanding and listening to these things and yeah i hope you enjoyed and see you on the next one